In my last video I did on taxi driver's stories, I brought you news about a taxi driver that was knifed in uh, the middle of a shift outside a kebab shop in Ramsgate. I got word the following day that he's actually okay, despite his obvious ordeal. But it does ask the question, how did it happen? Why did it happen? And more importantly, what us cab drivers can do to protect ourselves. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing alright, I'm not too bad. Let me know how you are in the comments and that you're going to have a good day. We're nearly at the end of another week, aren't we? So that's all good, that's all good. Don't forget folks, if you have a look at the social media links below, you can see stuff like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord and other places where you'll find subscribers chatting. Go over there if you've got accounts, go and have a natter, hook up with people, make friends, that's what it's all about. And please, as well, remember to hit the like button on this content if you can and share it with your friends, particularly if you find it useful because this is how everything spreads and how everything grows. And we are growing. I want to try and hit 40,000 subscribers if I can within the next two or three months. That would be absolutely perfect. I think we're getting near 38,000 actually. So uh, I'm very, very pleased with that. And I thank you very much for all your support. Well, let's have a look at this. As I said in the intro, I, I bought you a video earlier uh, with a couple of cab stories in it. One of my own and another uh, about a cab driver that was attacked, robbed and uh, knifed uh, in the last week or so. I got word the next day from uh, a cab driver I know that this guy is going to be okay. Uh, that's uh, that's the main thing. Obviously shaken up and, you know, he's probably going to need help to get over it if he can. And my best wishes to him. Yesterday I received a email from our local council. Uh, very much a seem-to-be-doing exercise, I think. But what it was, it was a, a document which contained a load of safety information for taxi and private hire drivers general advice on what to do when you're out and about now there was a very uh telling paragraph at the top of this document i'll read it to you as a taxi driver you are dealing with strangers often in isolated places and carrying cash taking people off the streets or from ranks with no knowledge of their home address or telephone number means that if they cause trouble, you are especially vulnerable. If you work at night, you are likely to have to deal with people who have drunk too much alcohol. All this means you may be at risk of violence. Well, yes, we do carry cash. Yes, if you get somebody from a rank, that's a, a taxi driver rather than a private hire driver. I, I'm a private hire driver. Taxi drivers are those that work off a meter that can be hailed in the streets. You know, taxi, that kind of thing. With them, you don't really have any knowledge of where they're actually going. You've only got their word for it because it's not done on a pre-booked basis. If you're a private hire driver, that work usually is assigned to you from an operator. I'm, as well as a cab driver, a, a private hire driver, I'm also an operator who gives work to other drivers. So then you do have some knowledge of where the person is and where they're going. Now, they give some advice here. Cash management. If you can drop off cash during your shift so that you carry as little in your car as you can. If you can't, keep your cash hidden from view in a secure box. Now, time is money. Taxi and private hire drivers are not going to go home every 10 minutes and drop off their cash. Nor will they be encouraged to take more card payments because of the processing fees. And that's another subject entirely. Tell you what I used to do. I had a metal cash tin like this. I used to put all the coins that I used to collect from passengers in that metal cash tin. I used to put it under my, under my seat, under my chair. Any notes that I used to have, bear in mind back in the day when I worked on the circuit, there wasn't really the number of card payments there are now, so it was more cash driven. I used to put the notes in my wallet, in my pocket, on the opposite side to where the passenger 
would be sitting either in the rear of the vehicle or to my side. The idea being is if they suddenly pulled a weapon on me and said, give me your money, Andy, metal cash tin. I've still got the majority of my takings in my pocket. And if matters persisted, a heavy metal cash tin can make a very blunt instrument, shockingly so, across the side of the skull. So, you know, these are little things. Now, I know taxi drivers that might keep other surprises underneath their chair as well, but we'll leave that one there. Uh, they talk about adjustments to your vehicle. When lockdown happened, uh, some of these plastic screens suddenly appeared, you know, uh, to separate you from the passenger for other reasons uh, than what we're discussing now. I've still got one on the wall behind me there. Uh, I took it out of my vehicle long ago. It's propped up against the wall. But they're made of a hardened plastic material, which could probably withstand a damn good blow or impact with an object some level of protection if somebody wanted to go that far. Taxis, hackney taxis, usually have screens in them anyway, uh, hard screens with a little hole in the middle to get the money in. They talk about CCTV cameras. Uh, it's a given in my view. I think most cabs should have one, particularly one that, should, uh, that records sound as well uh, because at the end of the day, sometimes you end up in a position where it's your word against theirs. I've had it before. Oh, he shortchanged me by 10 quid. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> you know, here's the audio, that kind of thing. Uh, and also they talk about giving a very good, getting a very good view of the rear of your cab. Most mirrors now, if you position them correctly, will give you a, a good view of the back of your cab. And particularly as well, if you're not happy about it, don't let people sit right next to you. And you've got to be very alert all the time. Uh, they're saying carry a spare key with you in case an assailant throws your keys away. If something very bad was to happen, uh, will you need your keys? Will you, will you be in a state to drive? Maybe you want to get away quick. A mobile phone. A mobile phone, cab drivers have got anyway because a lot of the apps and everything are on there nowadays. Notepad and pen to record incidents. Yeah, we have good enough memories. We need to be with this job. An emergency card with your name, date of birth, allergies and contact numbers for emergencies. Most of that will be on your person somewhere anywhere. An explanation of the fare structure. I like this one. Uh, so that you can explain it to a passenger who feels you are overcharging them. Well... If a passenger is in the mood that they want to argue about the fare structure, they won't give two shits about a piece of paper with it on. They won't want to pay you any more than they feel they have to. If you're ever in that position, cash up front or sling your hook. It's that simple. But a lot of work that I do particularly, and a lot of work that's pre-booked, the price is agreed in advance anyway. And I don't care what anybody says, any taxi driver worth their salts has the right to ask for cash up front. Period. If you're linked to a control centre, uh, yeah, this, this will be private hire drivers really. Use your radio to tell them where you're going. Now, this is a bit out of date. Not many use radios anymore. Most of it's app driven and most of it's GPS tracks. So you can tell exactly where the driver is, who they picked up, what time they picked up and where they go. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, have a prearranged code word you can use if a passenger becomes threatening. The system that I used to use when I worked on the circuit, we had a panic button. And I'll tell you about a story in another video, how that played out one night. No, it's not my mate Kev with the drunken bloke he left on the chair in the front garden. But a panic button system sends a broadcast message to every taxi driver that's logged on. And they will pile on and help you. And they will get to you a lot quicker than the old bill can. Uh, staying safe. Uh, you know that working at night carries most risk of violence, especially as many passengers would have been drinking. Not necessarily. I remember sometimes, I, I've worked days and I've worked nights, 
and I remember having more trouble during the day sometimes than I ever would have in an evening and more traffic to boot. You'd be, you'd be amazed. But there's several uh, bits of guidance there uh, about, you know, staying safe and if you feel threatened. Uh, if you feel threatened, try to stay calm, take slow, deep breaths, be aware of your actions and how they may be seen. Bullshit. If someone threatens you, then you've got to look after your own welfare. Uh, if you can drive to a brightly lit, busy place, they're often covered by CCTV. If you have a purpose-built taxi or saloon car, the screen, you're likely to be safer. Do not attempt to run after a passenger who owes you their fare. I did that once. I had to give up. I got out of breath. Uh, your safety is more important than the money. Absolutely correct. Well, I used to have a rule. When I used to pull up to somebody, I used to look at them and I used to assess how they were walking, how they looked, how they presented to me, and did I believe that that person would pose a threat to my safety? And if I couldn't positively answer each of those four points, they weren't getting in my taxi. As the final point here says, your safety is more important than the money. And I have left people a few times where I didn't believe that, you know, things were safe. If you're attacked, do not try to fight back. I don't agree with that at all. It's fight or flight, self-preservation. You've got to do what you've got to do to survive. I come from, you know, a background of being trained how to look after yourself and I'm afraid if someone was attacking me, I would not sit there and take it lying down. Uh, this guy that attacked the local taxi driver, he was in the back of the cab with a hood over him. So straight away, eyes on. Uh, it's not good. Uh, obviously, if anything happens, get your panic button pushed. 999, all the rest of it. It's it's fairly good advice, but some of it's out of date advice. That's just my perspective, really, on this document. And I'm assuming hundreds of you know drivers have got it all over my area. But, you know, are you a cab driver? Let me know what you think of this. It's always interesting to, you know, get get views on it back and forward. Anyway, bit of a long video. I'm off. I'll see you shortly with one more. Toodaloo.